The Princesses of Wales. In September 2022, Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, became Princess of Wales, the title previously held by her late mother-in-law, Diana. In last week's episode, we learned how, in 1282, King Edward I of England murdered the native Welsh princes, spiked their heads on the Tower of London, and gave their crown to his 13-year-old son. Ever since, the heirs apparent to the English and British throne have held the title Prince of Wales. There have been 29 Princes of Wales, 6 native Welsh, and 23 English. But because many of them held the title while they were still in their youth and bachelorhood, there have only been 16 Princesses of Wales. They have all been the wives of princes. Until the succession rules were changed in 2013, a woman could not be heir apparent, only heir presumptive, so there has never been a Princess of Wales in her own right. Let's meet the 16 Princesses of Wales. Joan, Lady of Wales, was an illegitimate daughter of King John of England. At 11, her father married her off to Llewellyn the Great as part of a peace treaty. Llewellyn, who was 30, had consolidated power amongst the Welsh kingdoms and was the first prince to force the English to recognize the sovereignty of Wales. His grandfather, Owain Gwyneth, is often considered the first Prince of Wales, but he never used that title, and neither did his wives, Gluadis Ferch Luarch and Kristen Ferch Goronwe. They were known as Brynhines, which translates to Queen. Joan was known as the Lady of Wales and Lady of Snowdon. Llewellyn built a church for her so that she wouldn't have to walk miles along the mountains to get to the nearest town. They had at least four children. Before long, King John was again encroaching on Llewellyn's borders. Joan tried to negotiate peace with her father, but to no avail. The prince allied with lords in southern Wales, and together they pushed the English out. King John died suddenly and passed the throne to Joan's half-brother, Henry III, who did make peace with Llewellyn. The most powerful of the southern lords, William de Braus, rebelled against the prince but was captured in battle. Llewellyn demanded a steep ransom and that their children should marry. One night, the prince walked into his bedchamber to discover his prisoner in bed with his wife. He dragged William out and hanged him on the spot. He imprisoned Joan for a year, but eventually forgave her. She died at 46, and Llewellyn founded a friary in her honor. He passed the throne to their son, Dauphit. His wife, Isabella du Bruaus, was the daughter of William du Bruaus, the man executed for cuckolding Llewellyn. The marriage proved childless. Dauphit died at 33 and Isabella two years later at 26. The next Prince of Wales was his nephew, Llewellyn, who allied with Simon de Montford, a baron who briefly kidnapped King Henry III and took control of England. Llewellyn negotiated to marry his daughter, Eleanor de Montford. Her mother was King John's youngest child. When Eleanor was 13, her father and brother were defeated and dismembered on the battlefield by the English king's son, Prince Edward. Eleanor and her mother fled to France. Ten years later, the Prince of Wales still wanted to marry her. While sailing to her wedding, Eleanor's ship was attacked. The pirates had been sent by her father's slayer, Edward, who was now King of England. He was furious with Llewellyn for having allied with his enemy, and he held his bride ransom for three years. The other Welsh lords were wary of Edward's ferocity and abandoned Llewellyn. The prince had little choice but to give in to Edward's demands, including recognizing English sovereignty, but he was allowed to marry Eleanor. King Edward gave the bride, who was also his cousin, away. Llewellyn loved Eleanor and was heartbroken when she died giving birth to their second daughter, Gwynlian. The Welsh and English went back to war. Llewellyn received a message to parley with the English, but it was a trick. He was ambushed and murdered. 
His head was spiked on the Tower of London. His younger brother, Dauphid, was the next Prince of Wales. His wife, Elizabeth Ferrers, was the daughter of the Earl of Derby. After Llewellyn's murder, the English laid siege to Dauphid's castle. His family escaped and went into hiding in the forest of Snowdonia, but were hunted down. Dauphid, Elizabeth, and their children were brought to England as prisoners. The last Prince of Wales was the first prominent person to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. His severed head was placed on a spike next to his brother's. Thus ended the independence of Wales. It is not known what became of Elizabeth. Her daughter, Gladys, and baby niece, Gwynlian, were imprisoned in a remote priory for the rest of their lives. By forcing them to become nuns, King Edward avoided them marrying and producing sons whom future Welsh rebels might rally behind. Elizabeth's two sons were imprisoned at Bristol Castle. Llewellyn died at 20. Owain lived into his 50s and was kept in a wooden cage to ensure he couldn't escape. With the Princes of Wales dead and their families now under his control, King Edward I granted the title Prince of Wales to his own 13-year-old son, Edward of Carnarfon. He didn't marry until after he became King Edward II. His wife, Isabella of France, raised an army and deposed him. Those who supported the king, including his younger brother, Edmund, were executed. His wife and two-year-old daughter, Joan of Kent, were held prisoner until their cousin, Edward III, came of age, took power from his mother, and set them free. At 13, Joan secretly married 26-year-old Thomas Holland. While he was gone waging war in Europe, Joan's family married her to the Earl of Salisbury. It took Thomas seven years to return home and discover his wife had been remarried. He appealed to the Pope, who had Joan's second marriage annulled, and ordered Thomas to remarry her, this time in a church. The couple had five children before he died. The 34-year-old widow was admired by her cousin, 30-year-old Edward the Black Prince, heir to the throne. He presented her with a silver cup, booty from his many military conquests, and appealed to the Pope for four dispensations to allow them to marry. These were necessary because they were too closely related under the Church's lax consanguinity laws, and because of Joan's colorful relationship history. They wed and Joan became Princess of Wales. They spent nine years in Bordeaux while Edward ruled Aquitaine. Joan gave birth to two sons, Edward, who died of the plague, and Richard. Prince Edward fell ill with dysentery and the family retreated to England. He died a few weeks later. Joan was an important advisor to her son, who was crowned Richard II at the age of 10. Her elder son, John, murdered a man in a dispute, and she pleaded with her royal son to pardon him. The strain killed 58-year-old Joan, and only then did Richard pardon his half-brother. Edward the Black Prince had built a fabulous tomb to share with his wife, but she elected to be buried with her first husband instead. Margaret Hanmer was the daughter of a Welsh lord. She wed another young lord whom her father had been tutoring, Owain Glendower. She gave birth to five sons and five daughters. In 1400, Owain got into a dispute with his neighbor. He was so offended that King Henry IV of England took his rival's side that he rose up in rebellion. The Welsh crowned him Prince of Wales, and he held the rival title for a decade. Margaret and her children were forced to go on the run. They were captured and taken to the Tower of London. Her eldest son, Griffith, died there. Owain could not compete with the size of the English army. He disappeared in 1412, and it is not known what became of him. Margaret lived until at least 1420, but her final fate is also unknown. Anne Neville's father, the Earl of Warwick, was loyal to the Yorkists during the War of the Roses. 
Anne and her older sister Isabel grew up with King Edward IV's younger brothers, George and Richard. Isabel married George, but before the younger pair could tie the knot, their father rebelled against the king. He switched sides to the Lancasters and married 14-year-old Anne to King Henry VI's only son, Edward, Prince of Wales. The couple were wed for five months before Edward was killed in battle alongside Anne's father. Isabel and Anne inherited his vast estate. Prince George wanted to keep the cash for himself, so he hid teenage Anne in a London cookshop disguised as a servant. His brother Richard was so keen to wed his childhood friend that he forfeited her fortune in order to find her. Eleven years into their marriage, Richard seized the throne from his nephew, Edward V, and he and Anne were crowned king and queen. The couple's only child, Edward, Prince of Wales, died suddenly at 10. A year later, Anne died of tuberculosis at 28. Heartbroken, Richard III was killed in battle and Henry VII took his crown. His son, Arthur, married Catherine of Aragon. The Spanish princess grew up with the influence of her powerful mother, Isabel of Castile. She was well-educated and spoke several languages. When she arrived in London at 16, she and Arthur liked each other immediately. They traveled to Wales so Arthur could rule there. Both contracted a sweating sickness. Catherine recovered, but Arthur died at 15. Her father and father-in-law claimed it was the other's duty to support the Dowager Princess. She had to sell her jewelry for food. She negotiated on her own behalf and was the first female ambassador in Europe. After seven years, Henry VII died and his son became King Henry VIII. The handsome 18-year-old wasted no time in marrying his brother's beautiful widow. While he was warring in France, the King of Scotland invaded. Catherine, heavily pregnant, rode north at the head of the army and won the battle. Days later, she went into premature labor and delivered a stillborn son. Catherine suffered four more losses. Only her daughter Mary survived. Henry believed a male heir was essential and he became obsessed with a biblical passage which said it was a sin to marry your brother's widow. He asked the Pope for an annulment but was denied because Catherine swore her marriage to Arthur had never been consummated. Furious, Henry used the Protestant movement to break with the Catholic Church, make himself the head of the new Church of England, and loot the monasteries of their wealth. Catherine was exiled, and Henry married her lady-in-waiting, Anne Boleyn. Henry kept their daughter away from Catherine, who spent the final two years of her life in misery and died of cancer at 50. Caroline of Ansbach was orphaned at 13 and taken in by Queen Sophia Charlotte of Prussia. Caroline was intelligent and attractive. Future Holy Roman Emperor Charles VI proposed, but she declined. Her guardian's nephew, Prince George, visited the Prussian court incognito to discover if he liked Caroline. She liked him back and they agreed to marry. They had a happy union, though he took mistresses and she looked the other way. He nursed her through a bout of smallpox. In 1714, his father inherited the British throne. George and Caroline moved to London and became Prince and Princess of Wales. They brought their younger children with them, but eldest son Frederick was left behind in Germany. Caroline and her husband embraced their new home and learned English. They were far more popular than the king, who openly hated England. In retaliation, the king separated Caroline from her children. He relented only after her baby son died without his mother. Caroline had 11 pregnancies, but only seven of her children survived to adulthood. When her husband became King George II, she was his trusted advisor. The queen played host to great thinkers of the day, including Voltaire, and was friends with Britain's first prime minister, Robert Walpole. During a formal reception, Caroline was struck with an intense abdominal pain. 
after the event, she discovered that part of her intestine was coming through her navel. She had an umbilical hernia from giving birth so many times. The king came to her deathbed and swore that he would never remarry, only take mistresses. She replied, oh, mon dieu, Caroline died at 54. At 29, her son, Frederick, Prince of Wales, had nearly eloped with Lady Diana Spencer, seven times great aunt of the Lady Diana Spencer, Charles, Prince of Wales, married in 1981. Her wealthy family offered £100,000 to pay the prince's gambling debts, but the king ordered his son to wed Augusta of Saxe Gotha instead. The 16-year-old bride spoke no English and played with dolls. Frederick took advantage of her naivete by appointing his mistress as her lady-in-waiting and instructing Augusta in petty ways to snub his parents. When the princess went into labor with her first child, Frederick dragged her out of bed in the middle of the night. He took her on a bumpy carriage ride to a different palace so that his parents would not be able to attend the birth. Augusta was pregnant with her ninth child when Frederick died at 44. She threw herself on the mercy of the king, who, without the interference of his vindictive son, was happy to support her and take her 13-year-old son, now his heir and the new Prince of Wales, under his wing. Augusta devoted herself to her children and expanding her husband's beloved Kew Gardens. She may have had an affair with her son's tutor. Her son became King George III at 22, and she was his trusted advisor. Her open support of unpopular Prime Minister Lord Bute caused scandal and Bute's resignation. Augusta did not get along with her daughter-in-law, Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg-Strelitz. She appointed maids to spy on her and kept her from making friends at court. She argued with her other children-in-law until dying of throat cancer at 52. Her granddaughter, Caroline of Brunswick, was the next Princess of Wales. She was the daughter of Augusta's eldest daughter. Caroline's parents did not allow her to attend dances or socialize with noble young men, so she snuck out and fraternized with common people and may have given birth to a secret love child. Despite numerous inquiries for her hand, her parents did not allow her to marry until she was 27 and her first cousin, George Prince of Wales, was the proposed groom. He had secretly and illegally married a Catholic commoner and his furious parents had ordered him to wed the German princess. The couple met on their wedding day and immediately disliked each other. He called for a brandy and she stage whispered that he was very very fat and nothing like as handsome as his portrait. George was drunk at the wedding, but they managed to do their duty and conceive a child, Charlotte, who was born nine months later. Prince George was hated for his expensive lifestyle, while the nation lived under austerity during the Napoleonic Wars. As his wronged wife, Caroline gained popularity. George kept their daughter from her, so she adopted nine orphans. Charlotte once ran away to be with her mother, but was dragged back to her father's palace. Caroline bought a villa on Lake Como in Italy and traveled the Mediterranean with her Italian lover. Princess Charlotte died at 21, giving birth to a stillborn son. George didn't bother to write to his estranged wife, and she heard of her only child's death from a passing courier. In 1820, George inherited the throne, and Caroline returned to London to be crowned queen. He ordered the doors of Westminster Abbey slammed in her face. She died of cancer three weeks later. The king ordered her body shipped back to Germany, but Londoners seized her coffin and paraded it through the streets. She was buried under the epitaph, Here Lies Caroline, the Injured Queen of England.
Alexandra of Denmark was the daughter of King Christian IX. In her youth, her family were minor poor royals, until her great uncle died childless and her father unexpectedly became King of Denmark. Alexandra wed Queen Victoria's son and heir, Albert Edward, Prince of Wales. They were the first couple to wave from the balcony of Buckingham Palace. They had a happy marriage, though she looked the other way while he carried on affairs with at least 55 mistresses. Alexandra loved dancing, ice skating, horseback riding, and spending time with her six children. She was a fashion icon and popularized the choker, which she used to cover a scar from a childhood operation. After a difficult delivery with her third child, she walked with a limp, and society ladies emulated her distinctive walk. Alexandra experienced deafness, which made her uncomfortable in social situations. She preferred to spend time at home with her children and pets. In 1901, her husband became King Edward VII. As queen, Alexandra was politically outspoken, especially against her nephew, Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany. She nursed Edward as he died at 68. She often cared for her grandchildren while her son and daughter-in-law traveled. She was renowned for her beauty and slim waist into her senior years and lived to the age of 80. Mary of Teck was a great-granddaughter of King George III. She grew up playing with her royal cousins, but her family was poor and moved to Italy and Germany, where they could live more cheaply. Mary returned to London at 19 for her debutante season. Queen Victoria decided her cousin was an ideal bride for her grandson, Albert Victor. He proposed, but six weeks later, he died in an influenza pandemic. His younger brother George took his place in the succession and at the altar. George was a boring man, but a devoted and faithful husband. They had six children who were left with brutal nannies and grew up with mixed feelings about their distant parents. George and Mary became king and queen in 1910. New technology meant they could travel widely throughout Europe and to South Africa and Canada. During World War I, Mary rationed food and visited wounded soldiers. She nursed her husband until he died in 1936, and their eldest son became King Edward VIII. He abdicated in 11 months to marry his mistress, Wallace Simpson, and his brother was crowned King George VI. Mary adored her granddaughters, Elizabeth and Margaret. She was enthusiastic about collecting art and antiques and became notorious for noticing beautiful things in other people's homes and strongly insinuating that she would like to receive them as gifts. Rumors spread that the queen was a kleptomaniac. In 1952, George VI died at 56. Mary, now 85, left instructions that her funeral should not halt the coronation of her granddaughter. Lady Diana Spencer was the daughter of the Earl of Spencer. She often played with Prince Andrew and dreamed that they might marry. After finishing school in Switzerland, she worked as a preschool assistant in London. She first met Prince Charles at a country shooting party when she was 16 and he 29 and dating her older sister Sarah. They met again two years later at a polo match and he took a serious interest in her. The couple were wed in 1981 in a fairy tale wedding. They were the first to kiss on the Buckingham Palace balcony, but on their honeymoon, it was clear that they had little in common. They argued frequently and Diana suffered mental illness and eating disorders. They had two sons, William and Harry. Charles reconnected with his old girlfriend, Camilla, and Diana had affairs of her own. When their adultery was splashed on the tabloids, Charles and Camilla got the blame. Diana was adored by the public as a fashion icon and for her work fighting children's cancer, AIDS, and landmines. The Prince and Princess of Wales divorced in 1996. A year later, while in Paris with her boyfriend, Egyptian millionaire Dodi Fayed, Diana was killed in a car crash. 
Her death shocked and saddened the world. Camilla Shand was born into an upper-class family in London. She worked as a secretary in the swinging 60s and met Prince Charles at a party in 1971. They were well-suited and met each other's families. But in 1973, their relationship ended abruptly. Either he wasn't ready to settle down or the royals felt Camilla was not a suitable future queen. She married an old boyfriend, Andrew Parker Bowles, and had two children, Tom and Laura and Charles married Diana. Not long into his unhappy marriage, Charles and Camilla resumed their affair. Camilla became infamous as the other woman. She and Andrew divorced in 1994. Charles and Camilla kept things quiet in the wake of Diana's tragic death, but they married in 2005. As Charles's wife, Camilla was technically Princess of Wales, but since that title was associated with Diana, she went by Duchess of Cornwall. In 2022, Charles became King and Camilla Queen Consort. Catherine Middleton's parents worked for British Airways until they launched a multi-million dollar mail order party supply company called Party Pieces. Catherine attended the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, where she caught the eye of fellow student Prince William while walking in a charity fashion show. After graduation, Catherine moved to London and worked as an accessories buyer. Her relationship with the prince made her a media focal point. She and William briefly broke up, but in 2010, they moved in together, and while on holiday in Kenya, he proposed with his mother's engagement ring. They wed in 2011 in a star-studded ceremony at Westminster Abbey and were created Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. The couple spent their first three years in Anglesey in Wales, where William served as an RAF helicopter pilot. Clothes Catherine wears frequently sell out. While she was pregnant with their first child, the 2013 Succession to the Crown Act gave daughters equal right to sons in the line of succession. Prince George was born in 2013, Charlotte in 2015, and Louis in 2018. The popular couple have taken on increasing public duties, charity work, and royal tours. In 2022, King Charles III inherited the throne and created William, Prince of Wales. The couple visited Wales, where they were welcomed by some and protested by others. There are growing calls for the title Prince of Wales to be abolished. Thus, there are no plans for William to have an investiture ceremony like his father did in 1969. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.